Well, hey, all of you sheepies near and far. Today is Saturday, October 24th, 2020. We just had a confirmation service here at the church for four of our fabulous teenagers. And so God's blessings upon Skylar and Tegan and Dominic and Brianna. Tomorrow at both Trinity and Sillaroo Lutheran Church, they will also have confirmation service. And uh, so stay tuned to my Facebook page. I'm sure you'll be seeing some pictures uh, of those fabulous young people too. If you missed our worship service, you can find it on my Facebook page under uh, on the live feed. So I think you should be able to watch it. So this uh, message is for tomorrow, Sunday, October 25th. So let us, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we have a forever home built through you and your sacrifice for us. Your kingdom will never end and it remains for us forever. Thank you for welcome, welcoming us into your forever home. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our message title for today is This House, and we are in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 17. It didn't seem right to King David that he lived in a palace and that God lived out in the backyard in a tent. King David lived in a house made of cedar, the rarest and most valuable timber of the day. Can you imagine the fragrance? If you've ever smelt a cedar chest, can you imagine the, the fragrance as you walk the hallways? No need for a Febreze or a Glade plug-in there. King David wants to build God a house of, of cedar, but God says, no thanks. As God's people, that is so like us, though, isn't it? We focus on the material stuff. And perhaps that is part of our American culture, our American psyche, especially, to focus on the best of the best. And what we want is not necessarily what we need in order to live. We oftentimes think, well, if this is good, then that, whatever that is, must be way better. In our lesson for today from 2 Samuel chapter 7, God is teaching King David and us that he is indeed a God that is on the move. He always has been and always will be. A God that is not, is not confined to buildings or places. God is both a God on the move with us as well as a God of permanent, permanency. He's a forever God, and his kingdom, his reign, and his house is forever, forever and ever. Amen. So as we think about buildings and houses, what comes to mind for you? As we think about the text for David, this house in which he lives represents a house of a king, his reign. And King David was the second king of Israel as we revisit our Old Testament history a bit, who was the first king? Saul. King Saul, who Samuel anointed. Remember, we looked at baby Samuel last week and his mama, Hannah. And Saul turns out to be a not-so-suitable king. And so the Lord knocks him off his reign. And then he sends Samuel to find a new king through the family of Jesse. And who does Samuel find? the runt of the litter, the little guy, the youngest son, David, who's out in the pasture. Remember, he's, he's out playing his harp and he's tending to his sheep. And God says to Samuel, after, after they've looked over all of the brothers, that one, I want that one, the little guy out there tending the sheep. That's gonna be the new king. And so as you think back on your childhood home, what was it like? Our oldest son, JJ, and daughter-in-law, Amy, and their family live in the farmhouse that I grew up in outside of Laverne. And if you go to the Rock County Courthouse and you look it up, that farmhouse is, is the oldest house in, still standing in, in Rock County in the record books. My parents, 
both my biological mom, uh, when she was living, and dad, did a lot of work on the house to make it a home. And, and my parents did a lot of upkeep and additional work to make that house a home. And JJ and Amy and their growing family have done a lot of work to make the house a home. And as I visit them, whenever I'm in the house, memories, oh my goodness, those memories just come, come flooding back to me. The, our grandkids have their toys upstairs. And so I'll go up there and we'll play. And I'll say to Ryan and Dax, this was grandma's bedroom when I was a little girl. And they just smile. So when you think about what kind of houses kings live in, do you think of Buckingham Palace? Do you think of power? Do you think of the United States White House where President Trump lives? Or maybe you think about a sports complex and tax dollars to build stadiums. That one kind of gets me, even though I know that revenue works both ways. Putting aside the political election, do you think money? What do you think? Tomorrow we're going to look at some slides as I, I preach. So think about a um, picture of Elvis Presley in Graceland, okay? Maybe you think of the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. Elvis grew up in some pretty humble beginnings. He was born in just a two-room house. Elvis told his parents that he would build them a house someday, and so they wouldn't have to worry about financial stress. We know that Elvis died in, in the Graceland house. Unless, of course, you're one of those conspiracy theorists and you think Elvis is still walking around somewhere. How about churches? Three churches are an uh, important part of my family history. Laverne United Methodist Church, uh, St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Lismore, and of course here in Ballaton, United Methodist Church. As God's people over centuries, we have built massive, beautiful houses of worship. These three houses of worship for me are part of who I am. Laverne United Methodist Church is where I was baptized, confirmed, and married, and sent from. I tell new clergy that one of the hardest parts of this pastor gig for me was when it came time for me to surrender my membership to Laverne United Methodist Church. Our, our four just took membership vows to be a member here at Ballotin UMC. That was hard for me. As United Methodist pastors, our membership belongs to the annual conference. And another hard part for me was surrendering my keys to the church. That, that was hard. St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Lismore is my husband Jim's family church. I do love me some pretty church steeples, and St. Anthony's has some beautiful ones. And then, of course, there is us, Ballotin UMC, small but mighty. The Tabernacle. You can go online and Google a picture of the Tabernacle. The tabernacle housed the Ark of the Covenant, the two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, the, the second set now. Remember, Moses got ticked off and smashed the first one after the golden calf incident that we looked at. The house of God here in our story was a tent, a very portable, temporary dwelling place, movable as God's people moved from place to place. And now that period of judges had come to an end, and now that David was king, he wants to build God a house. David is trying to sort out why he, as king, lives in this beautiful house made of cedar, while God's, how, God's out there camping in, in the backyard. So David calls in his lead pastor guy, this guy named Nathan, who is a prophet. And he is sort of talking out loud to him. And David says, you know, here I am living in this fancy snancy house while God is out there in, in a tent. And Nathan basically says, King, I think you should do whatever you want. Because basically kings do whatever they want, even when they are advised otherwise. 
And so David sleeps on it with the intent of starting to build God a house. And Nathan, he sleeps on it too. But God comes to Nathan and he speaks to him, this lead pastor of the king, and he says, I'm God. Did I ask anybody to build me a house? I don't need a house. If I needed a house, I would have had other leaders build me a house long ago. Go to my servant David, which is how God addresses David as my servant David. This is what the Lord says. I took you from the pasture. Don't you love that? I took you from out there in the pasture, from following the flock to be a ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all of your en en enemies from before you. That there's a time of peace right now in Israel from all of these wars that are going on. God continues. He says, now I will. I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men of the earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over, I will raise up your offspring and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Verses 4 through 13. So the next morning, Nathan tells King David about his dream, the one where God says he doesn't need a permanent dwelling, at least not right now. And Nathan tells David something else, that God promises to bless David. This blessings that God invokes upon David is not about prosperity. You know, I do not like Joel Olstein and the prosperity gospel. It isn't about if I do this, I get a reward. That's not how this goes. That isn't how God works. It isn't about if I just think positive thoughts all the time, I'm going to get this outcome. That is what Joel Osteen is going to preach to you, friends. So be very careful, okay? And that isn't reality, and it also isn't biblical. Because the reality is we can pray with all of our heart and with all of our might, and sometimes the outcome is not what we would like it to be, right? Because the power is not in our hands. The power is in God's, okay? This blessing, this promise of God to David is a forever promise of a forever kingdom that doesn't look like our perception of what kingdom looks like. This kingdom promise is that God promises to be with David and his descendants wherever they go. This is a Davidic kingdom of David's line, and it will extend all the way to who? Hmm? all the way to Jesus through David's lineage. If you go to Matthew and, and you read Jesus's genealogy, yeah, through King David, all the way to Jesus, from David's line, a king will come, Jesus, the forever king. This promise is that God is on a journey with David. It is a kingdom promise that holds steady when earthly leaders and earthly kingdoms fall. And oh baby, don't we need that assurance in this time and in this place? Can I get an amen? Amen, right? It's not about the building. <laughs> Boy, we have learned that. Hopefully we have learned that through this pandemic from this time of not being able to gather as we would like, you know, normally uh, we would have had confirmation tomorrow and our sanctuary, our little sanctuary here would have been filled to the brim. Can't do that safely with COVID, can't. It's not about the building. 
It's about God building in David. It's about God building in you. It's about God building in me. God building in us, friends. Pictures of us. Pictures of us. Don't be offended, Valentin UMCers. Our district superintendent, Fred, has, has said before, it just because he's trying to get us to think deeply, he has asked the question of us here, what attracts people to Ballotin UMC? What attracts people to JAM? Because it's certainly not our building. It's not our structure, even though we have done tons of work. Thanks be to God for all of the hands and feet and contributions and people who continue to maintain our building. I'm not saying that. Please don't be offended, okay? But we're not the newest house of worship in Ballotin. In fact, I think we're the oldest one in town, our structures. What attracts people to our church? What attracts people to your church? Pictures of us. God is telling David, permanent structures are, are great. We'll get there. Solomon, King David's son, is going to build the temple. God's going to have David's son Solomon build that, that beautiful temple. But right now, God doesn't need David to build him a house. For God to build David's house, David's dynasty, this sacred soil, for the next generation, sometimes plans might not be accomplished through us and our generation but rather through our children and our grandchildren or through someone whom we've invested in years ago. <laughs> Maybe through these fabulous four that just affirm their baptismal vows. Maybe that's how God's going to continue to build Ballotin UMC and JAM. Sometimes it takes a while to see that fruit harvested. This is God building his kingdom household, working through people just like you and me and all of us together who proclaim God's kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is our story. This is our song, friends. God is the only one powerful enough to do what God does. David, although he is a man after God's own heart, is still flawed. He knows it. But God builds in him a kingdom anyway of people who carry on that message that God reigns. God reigns. That is God in control, that God's kingdom is forever, and this house stands. For this is the house that God has built, and all God's beautiful people say, Amen. Amen. Have a beautiful week. Watch the weather. I haven't uh, tuned into the forecast here today. I'm going to go home and, and check that out here in a little bit. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with that big, big smile and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.